kerancangan bicara. Sami Yusuf, penyanyi yang digelar Raja Pop Muzik Keislaman, menjadi tamu bicara malam ini. Beliaulah fenomena yang mempelopori muzik keislaman kontemporari di peringkat global sebelum munculnya penyanyi seperti Mahir Zain. Lantaran mesej lagu-lagu beliau yang merentas sempadan bangsa dan agama, Sami Yusuf dinobatkan oleh majalah Time sebagai bintang rock terbesar Islam. Warga Britain ini juga dijulang di negaranya sebagai Muslim Britain paling terkenal di dunia. Sami Yusuf boleh menyanyi dalam tujuh bahasa dan boleh bermain lebih daripada sepuluh alat muzik. Dan lebih penting lagi, beliau memperkenalkan muzik yang beliau gelar spiritik, iaitu suatu falsafah muzik yang menggabungkan unsur timur dan barat, di mana falsafahnya ialah menyatukan umat dari pelbagai latar belakang menerusi mesej kerohanian. Mutu muzik beliau juga menjadi alternatif kepada muzik arus utama. Lantaran ketukuhannya memperjuangkan seni muzik intelektual, Sam Yusuf mencatat sejarah apabila menjadi Muslim pertama dan paling muda dianugerahkan ijazah kehormat Doktor Persuratan tiga tahun lalu pada usia 28 tahun. Baru-baru ini beliau mengadakan konsert di Singapura. Bicara bertemu dengan beliau dan dalam wawancara ini, Sami berkongsi secara mendalam mengenai falsafah muzik beliau, ciri muzik kerohanian dan juga pandangan terus terang beliau mengapa muzik barat beliau sifatkan sebagai bobrok dan kurang nilai. Sami Yusuf, selamat datang ke Rancangan Bicara. Terima kasih. Thank you for having me. Anda seorang yang bijak ya. Anda sebenarnya seorang yang pintar sekali. Anda boleh menjadi seorang peguam terkenal atau boleh menjadi seorang ahli akademik terkenal, seorang profesor lah boleh saya katakan ya. Tapi kenapa anda memilih untuk menjadi seorang penyanyi? Um, first of all, thank you very much for your uh, very kind, very gracious, uh, extremely kind words. Um, I don't, I don't see myself as a singer. I think I have a very kind of spiritual uh, interpretation. Of, uh, of what I do. It's life itself. If you go to the traditional world and I'm not in any way, you know, com- there's no compa- no stuff for Allah, any kind of comparison, but in the traditional understanding, if you went to someone like, for example, Rumi, or you went to somebody and said, you're a poet, he'd probably be offended by that because that's his life. Actually, he's not writing poetry. For him, it's an extension of himself. Um, and, and, and I think similarly with the correct understanding in a spiritual context, um, in my own humble way, I just see it as life. I really don't see myself as a singer or a musician by profession or a composer. It's my life. It's, a, it's an extension of me and it's a way to, a platform for me to also project my spiritual um, feelings. Jadi anda ni apa ya? Dalam satu perkataan, anda ni apa sebenarnya? That's a very difficult question, and I know you're expecting some philosophical, one-worded answer, but the world we live in is a complicated world. But in one word, if I was to sum it all up, and I'd again look at it from a spiritual perspective, faqir lillah, al-faqir lillah. Tapi sebenarnya ya, anda sebenarnya boleh menjadi seorang peguam yang menyanyi, atau seorang profesor yang menyanyi, ya? It's interesting you say that because in my family, although my dad is a composer, um, and you know, music is it's like food, you know, it's like breathing in my home, um, and never void from spirituality, always together, always connected. Music is pure. Music is understood traditionally. Um, it's pure and in the traditional understanding. 100% connected to the human soul and, and, and by default, the sacred, uh, God. Um, I can give you many examples. Johann Sebastian Bach uh, of Haydn. In the traditional world, 
pre-enlightenment, po- um, uh, basically 16th century, 17th century, even I'd say uh, mid 18th century, the composers, people like 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 Bach. I mean, he would openly say, "I make no, I make music for no other reason but to glorify God." Haydn is the same. You know, he's the father of symphonies. I think he made like a thousand symphonies. Um, Mozart is the same. They're celestial. The compositions are all connected to the sacred. And similarly, in the Islamic tradition, we didn't have... I, I have yet to come across a Persian composition, a classical Persian composition, or a classical Turkish composition that is secular. In fact, the name, the very, the very word secular doesn't exist. In, in, in Islamic, in Arabic it doesn't exist, in Farsi it doesn't exist, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist in Turkish. It doesn't exist because we just don't have uh, that kind of understanding. So in my family, music was something connected to, to spirituality and God. So my father kind of expected me to more kind of, you know, get into the academic side and, and, and become maybe a doctor or like any typical Middle Eastern family. They want their children to be lawyers, uh, um, professors. But no, I chose, he couldn't stop me. And uh, subsequently, with Fadlillah, he's very proud and Alhamdulillah, very happy of the outcome. <laughs> Sami Yusuf, anda memperkenalkan apa yang anda katakan tadi ya sebagai music spiritik ya. Kenapa ya orang ramai harus peduli, harus beri perhatian kepada music spiritik yang anda perkenalkan tu ya? Kerana ada yang menyatakan bahawa ini bukan teori baru ya? Yes and no. Um, spiritique, what makes it unique is the east and western modes, but at the service of spirituality, at the service of bringing people closer to the immutable, bringing people closer together, and thus taking them, inshallah, closer, that bit closer, and, um, connecting with the, the with, with the immutable truth, the transcendent reality. Um, but uh, in, and also, in, in some ways, it's not new because many people are doing that. There are, in the past, you have traditional anashid. But again, it's more kind of very, op- very um, uh, clear and very familiar sound and you know it. You know, when you have an, a Malaysian nasheed or an Arabic nasheed, um, it's very clear and very overt. Whereas with spiritique, there's more room for interpretation. It's it's more um, and the modes of course the sound and the sound is distinctly my voice because my voice is a mixture of east and west. I might sing wherever you are, da, 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 but then when I say la 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 da, 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 that gives it a distinct sound. Whereas everything before it was common, was you know it, you can hear it, you can you know. Um, but again, where, for example, in Turkey or in the Arab world, again, the familiar sound, but it's in Arabic. It's very, not very um, often that you hear English and making it work, <laughs> giving it, you know, without it sounding cheesy or... or but, but you're, you know, the, 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 you've touched on a very important point. We as human beings, and again, I don't mean to sound philosophical, I'm just giving you my personal beliefs. We are vertical creatures. We're not horizontal. We are not a stone, we have a soul. And this soul, we're like that. We have to be, we, by, whether we like it or not, by fitra. Our fitra is connected to the sacred. Some people will deny this, but no matter how much, if Karl Marx or any of these big atheists, if they knew that today Hinduism, Christianity, Islam was more relevant today than it was 200 years ago, they shoot themselves. They would shoot themselves because we human beings are spiritual creatures. We have to be connected to the sacred. We have to be. Some people, they choose different scripture, different, you know, to, to, to connect. But ultimately, we are by default spiritual creatures and we're vertical. We're not like this. We're like that. We are connected to spirituality. So spiritique is a dimension of that, you know. So people who have that in them, hopefully, inshallah, God willing, they'll find it relevant. <laughs> Baik dalam wawancara anda ya di Singapura juga sekitar dua uh, tiga bulan lepas anda ada menyatakan bahawa uh, muzik Barat ya kurang nilai. Saya kira kenyataan sedemikian boleh menggunakan kontroversi ya. 
Anda berpegang kuat kepada kenyataan sedemikian? No, I'm I'm I don't worry too much about controversies and and making people not like me. I don't try hard for people to like me. You know, I tried to I think it was Aristotle, I think, who said, I like Plato, but I like the truth more. You know. So, uh, ultimately, I mean, the, the truth is more important. The re reality is, honest to God, I believe this, by and large, there is also great Western music, but by and large, the mainstream pop industry, I'm talking about the Lady Gagas, and I don't even know their names, I just know her because she's very, very famous. But these, all these, is decadent. It's low. They themselves, they have to come to the East to get inspiration. And the reason why it's decadent, the reason why it's so low is because it's profane. Because the sacred is totally missing. It doesn't even exist. They deny it. A music, or I would say any part of life that's disconnected with the higher things, will ultimately... Um, they may argue otherwise. They may say, oh, what are you talking about? But ultimately, when, when you're, the whole thing is revolved around materialism and commercialism and, and just pure money and, and the values, there are no values. You know, it's just very low things. Um, I call it terrestrial music. You know, there's a celestial and you've got terrestrial. I call it terrestrial decadent music. Because really, um, for me, it's, much of it is noise. Much of it. It's not music. I'm not talking about sound. There's a difference between music and sound. Yes, in terms of engineering and sound quality, they, they, you know, the mathematical stuff, the kind of a very um, objective mathematical capturing sound, you know, they, they, they do it well, the technical aspects. But in terms of the actual substance, the music, again, we compare Mozart, classical music. Compare church, the music of Bach, the mass in B minor, Bach's mass in B minor, to this day, they are performing it, and to this day, it moves you like it moved you 400 years ago. Whereas pop music, the shelf life is a couple of years. So these are just terminologies, it's just commercialism, but ultimately, the music, the true music, why is it that today we still sing Why do we sing that to this day? It's brought to us orally, you know, generation to generation from the Prophet himself وسلم, until today we're singing the same why because these sounds are not they're coming from somewhere they're coming from somewhere high when you hear the Quran being recited even if you don't understand what is being said you often get I've heard people who get goosebumps why because the sounds of course the words phonetically they're the words of God but the sound as well you know, the way it's recited, it's coming from somewhere. That's music. Anda sudah diangkat ya dengan pelbagai gelaran yang baik-baik ya. Misalnya, Raja Pop Islam, Bintang Terbesar Dunia Islam, dan juga gelaran Muslim Britain paling terkenal ya. Tapi hakikatnya ya, hakikatnya anda datang ke rantau Asia Tenggara ini agak lambat ya. Southeast Asia, I've always wanted to come here. The truth is that I had a problem with my former record company. And that problem, although it's a six-year-old issue, but it's even existing today. What's important is that we're here now, and it took a long time, but uh, we're very honored to be here. There are several reasons. That was one of them. The other reason also is I'm not really a commercial artist. I don't perform much. I don't release that much material. I take my time. Um, my last album took five years to make. Um, and commercially was not as big, if you like, as um, the second, the first and second albums. But it's much uh, closer to my heart today, um, and it's uh, very close to the spirit of the first two albums. But what's important for me more than anything is to keep things um, sincere and honest. And we should not be too interested in numbers. One of the problems that we have in today's uh, world is also in many different areas, but also in the music as well, is the infatuation, obsession with numbers. Huge numbers, you know. And lavishness. Mengapa hey. tidak? Mengapa tidak, ya? Karena bilangan, jumlah yang besar itu menunjukkan berapa ramai yang sudah berjaya mendekati, ya? That's not a bad thing, so long as 
you don't compromise. So long, so long as you don't do things that would, you know, are questionable to to reach those numbers. Saya juga akan berhujah ya, Sami, bahawa anda sebenarnya datang ke sini selepas melihat kejayaan Mahir Zin di rantau Asia Tenggara ini ya. Selepas itu baru anda nampaknya melihat potensi sekitar 300 juta orang Islam di rantau ini. Honestly, um, I my opinion on this is that we should we shouldn't try to think too much in the in that way you know break into the market and do it in a, either happens or it doesn't happen we try our best you know we we have so, we have some control over the variables but the result of the variables are not in our hands regarding artist um maher definitely heard about him and the way i look at it is if there is good and there's a lot of good people he's from my former i mean my former record company uh actually they took him on board and um unfortunately there is this kind of um uh their outlook is like we need to we need to create a nemesis for sami you know we need to you know and this outlook is very dangerous is very very dangerous because it will lead to downfall you know it's the, it will lead to humiliation um what we need to do is we need to have a mature and very spiritual outlook we need to promote good music promote good art promote individuals we need many people like him we need many people like that doing good work the music for me is questionable you know the sound is questionable considering when i was making al muallim i was making for example ya mustafa one of the songs ya mustafa it's in a sheet from the qawali you know from sabri brothers and i remember adding a little percussions to, to, you know per, traditional percussions wallahi i remember at the time you know the company was saying astaghfirullah be very careful you know this is dangerous and i said look you know, i'm a musician i don't see anything wrong with these percussions and now we're talking about R- i mean literally r&b we're talking about hip hop and r&b full fledged and is endorsed and i think we have to be very careful i think what we can do is be innovative we can we can try to you know try to look more careful be more deeper and i think that you know this is an example not of him as an artist but of the industry that is trying so hard to only look at numbers only you know and it's very dangerous it wouldn't be dangerous if you weren't using a religious if you weren't giving it a religious color you know because once you give it a religious color you're giving legitimacy acceptability comfort oh so i can be basically a muslim justin to blake i can be as an example i'm just giving you the that world view i can be a female islamic lady gaga no don't give it a religious color make music do whatever you want to do but don't use the i word at the beginning because i have a duty because you were very gracious very kind at the beginning you used the p word you were very gracious i feel i have a duty to say these things you know and it may not be pleasing to many people many people might not like what i have to say but i feel like it's i'm duty bound to a certain degree to say the truth as i see it and then every no one is perfect i have many faults i have i make many mistakes um but in terms of commercialism and and the popularity of music we have to be very careful to not copy the west Kongsi dengan kami Sami ya. Di mana sekarang ini pasaran terbesar bagi anda adakah di Eropah, Amerika, Asia Tenggara ataupun di Timur Tengah? I don't know. You know, we we I I you might laugh but I really don't see it as a market, you know. I don't like that word. You know, I've got a problem with money and money and religion and music. It's just they're all such I feel like they're diametrically opposed. You know, there's just opposites but i'm trying to come to terms with all this stuff you know i'm trying to put it all in but to be honest with you 
um, brother, I have to be very clear on something. Spiritually, musically, where I am today is somewhat ahead of, of at the moment, where, for example, my albums are. Like, for example, me, I, I produced with strings and I was doing it when I was 15 years old. You know, orchestras and big arrangements through my father and the, and the things we were doing at the time. And now, what gives me pleasure is just arranging something with a cappella. Just the voice. Just the human voice. And hearing that and doing something, just one word, you know, Latif or Rahman, Rahim. Allah and just hearing that being repeated over and over again with the voice only the human voice without any instruments it's interesting you know like that's how I feel now I'm kind of I feel a little bit um, tired of the instruments you know over instrumentation strings and production I think one of the things that is a tr it's very very difficult to do is to make to be minimalistic but to bring minimalism you know make it beautiful it's very easy to put a lot of stuff you know oh that's a big production that's easy to do you know, especially if you've got the right team you put it together but it's very difficult to make something simple but beautiful and it lasts and uh, I hope inshallah I hope God willing that you know, I can, in some tiny way, be part of that minimalistic approach, do something. Uh, in my next album, I'm very excited about, not Salam, not this one, the next one, which is, um, which is really, hopefully, God willing, trying to, it's, a, it's really a, a spiritual project, a very spiritual project. Mungkin ini suatu soalan yang anda kurang gemar ya, tapi ingin juga saya tanyakan ya, mengapa ya tiada superstar Muslim yang cuba untuk menembusi atau menerobos China secara besar-besaran misalnya kita maklum ya bahawa China um, bakal dan sedang menjadi sebuah negara gergasi ya pasaran begitu besar ekonominya begitu besar dan rakyatnya begitu ramai sekali. Because we're too engrossed in ourselves, we're too fascinated by ourselves, we're preaching to the already converted, we're talking to ourselves, and that is a you know the moment I said, guys, to my previous team, look. This is all good, but this is too closed. We're talking to ourselves. You know, that's when I, I started to have problems. You know, that's when I had, you know, because the money was going to stop. Because it meant making music that wasn't going to bring in, you know, 5,000 trillion likes or billion views, you know, because the truth is that reaching people and connecting with people and sticking to the fundamentals staying to the, the way you can reach the Chinese is not by going to them and saying Allahu Akbar on going to them and, and trying to preach to them the way you reach people is talking about the immutable truths the perennial truths the truths that transcend even any one tradition it's God through God Jadi adakah anda akan pergi ke China? It would be a dream for me to go to China it would be an absolute honor not just to China but there are so many parts of the world, Latin America, I'd love to go to. And, you know, Spiritique is a way for me to present my work without it becoming... That's why I don't use the word Islamic. And one of the reasons why I don't use the word Islamic, because when you say Islamic, you immediately close your audience. You know, you immediately say, it's us and them. Whereas it's only us. There is one world, there's one people, and there are traditions. There are great traditions. And my dream, my hope, inshallah, not just for China, but India is a very important place. You know, Sri Lanka, you know, Asia generally, Thailand, you know, you mentioned China, of course, because of its relevance of its population. But the thing is, we Muslim musicians, Muslim artists, you know, we need to invest a lot. And also the elders, people who have uh, means, you know, they have finance, they have, they can do things, you know, they can help. We need institutions. We, need, we literally need, like, music, really, universities, institutions, to understand uh, the, the classical and traditional understanding of music. What does it mean? Where does it come from? You know, 
What does it mean for me as a Muslim? What does music mean? It's all a bit of an experiment, and that's why it's dangerous to just blanket, you know, blanket the S I word, you know, just make it Islam because it's very dangerous, very dangerous in a very complicated time and giving mixed messages and it's very complicated. But generally speaking, by making, by removing the overtly, openly, I wouldn't even call it a religious message. I call it an identity project. You know, some kind of, oh, look how good I am, I have a beard. Or look, I am wearing a hijab, you know. So that kind of identity, and I would say Arab-centric, Arab-centric identity project, by removing that and trying to focus more on, on the spiritual core truths, the core issues, and investing in that, you know, working on it. I think that is the way you reach people. And that's my hope, inshallah, my goal is to achieve that, definitely that. Sami Yusuf, terima kasih kerana sudi berbicara dengan kita. Terima kasih. Kali ini. Thank you very much. God bless you. Anda tidak akan terlepas menyaksikannya lagi. Tonton.